Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. My name is Jake Scanlon. I'm the lead educator here at the Academy and this is a place for you to learn anything to do with Bitcoin and everything to do with Bitcoin, starting with the fundamentals. And those fundamentals are to do with the energy side of things, the compute Bitcoin mining aspects and Bitcoin taught in the context of money, finance and the blockchain taught last. And when you go through the layers like that, you have a more grounded understanding of the production process essentially of Bitcoin. And who sits in the middle of that epicenter? Well, it's the Bitcoin miners. And the topic of today's video is hyper decentralization and potentially the collapse of the publicly listed Bitcoin miners. Why? The short term answer is that Bitcoin mining is a game of efficiency and energy availability. Those are the two levers. You've got the uptime of the machines and the performance and the ability to repair and the access to chips and all these sorts of other pieces. But the two key uh, metrics across all of the Bitcoin miners are what is the efficiency of their mining hardware and essentially how many blocks of Bitcoin are they capturing relative to the network? What is the profitability of mining? If the, the dollarized price was to shoot up to really high levels and production stays low, well, you're capturing a large premium of dollarized value of quantity of Bitcoin. But in the bear market, when price is trading closer to production, you've really got to be efficient to survive. And the whole approach here of why I believe hyper decentralization will naturally occur is this. So I'm going to first explain uh, just the dynamics of efficiency. And from that, you'll understand the, the context of hyper decentralization, because it will occur when, uh, well, Bitcoin mining compute chips are pretty much in every home and potentially a node in every home. And so if you've got a storage system of data on top of that, the three core components of read, write and own would be essentially in the home. How, how much more decentralized can you get from that? And this will occur from the world of being able to source power, so potentially uh, local electricity grid or producing energy yourself being able to convert some of that excess energy into compute hash power. And that allows you to earn Bitcoin um, through blocks to store that transaction data in your own node and your own wallet. So uh, I do believe that in the future, someone somewhere will make a device that reintegrates all of the core components of the entire Bitcoin network, the six core pieces and the three core commodities of electricity, compute and Bitcoin, all in a single device for the home. And that will bring us to hyper decentralization. Big word. And the path there is truly through efficiency. And let me explain why. The Bitcoin miners at large industrial scale, they get the economics of buying a machine at potentially half the price that you would pay at retail. Now, why is that important? Well, if you spent $5,000 on one machine, You've got one machine, $5,000, and you're now pricing that $5,000 of dollars or that quantity of Bitcoin that you paid against the potential for that single machine to produce Bitcoin. We don't even need to know the amount. The point is, if a large industrial scale miner can buy thousands of that same computer, but at half the price, he spent half the Bitcoin, but gets that same amount of Bitcoin from that machine relative to uh, production of compute and uptime. So if he spends half the amount his his uh, the rate of the quantity of Bitcoin he needs to accumulate to break even effect effectively in dollar or Bitcoin terms is half the half the amount. And as more time goes on, the let you, you earn less Bitcoin over time because it's fewer Bitcoin being chased by more energy or dollars in that sense. And so efficiency is critical for this because efficiency changes that metric of how much electrical cost in versus Bitcoin out. And so that continual purchase of new machines and they're at higher prices. Think of the latest generation iPhone. The latest generation iPhone is really expensive. But if you jump back five, 10 generations, they're really cheap. And the difference between those different generations of iPhone are the, the density of transition transistors in the microchip, the storage and the, the processing um, and features and whatever else they actually don't put in iPhones anymore. I used to be excited about the latest one coming out with new things, but now it's the same thing. There's, there's, uh, it's flattened out, there's no prosperity there. But here with Bitcoin mining, if you bring out a new, more efficient chip, you now earn more Bitcoin because there's less cost associated to the, the conversion rate. For example, 
if you buy a really old machine of last generation, 30 joules of energy per terahash. Now you can multiply joules and terahash by a million to change it to essentially uh, megawatts and exahash. So I have here um, these figures are effectively multiplied by a million, but it's the same conversion rate, 23.5. It would be 23.5 megawatts per exahash. So I have it in an exahash figure, but you can sit, you can use the same the same uh, variable. So 30 joules per terahash. Um, well, that's the same as saying 30 megawatts per exahash, and one exahash is making 0.56 Bitcoin. So um, all of these compute, all these three examples produce well, in this a terahash, but it can be an exahash. So all these three computers produce $47,000 worth of Bitcoin, but they have three different types of electrical cost, 30 megawatts, 20 megawatts, and 10 megawatts. At five cent a kilowatt, I, I know I've been moving all the units around, but the gist is this, um, the 10 joules per terahash, most efficient, most expensive computer has a electrical bill of $12,000 a day versus the $47,000 of mined. All three mine the same amount, but have but this one being 20 joules instead of 10 is twice as much electrical billing or three times as much electrical billing. So it's the the hash rate produces the same amount of uh, the same fungible amount of compute makes the same fungible amount of um, Bitcoin and underneath the energy is changing because of efficiency and the least efficient machines are cheaper. And you get this process of miners are effectively buying buying efficiency in bulk. They average across all the different groups they are mining. And they're getting rid of the older, more inefficient compute uh, cell. Now, five cent is a very generous rate for um, larger, more infrastructure scale miners, but let's say residential, 15, 15 cent per kilowatt. So you would multiply this by three, which barely makes you break even. You multiply this by three and you're making a loss. You multiply this by three, you're making even more of a loss. And that's the reason why as, as, the, as time goes on, the Bitcoin network is gaining more efficiency. The average approximately of the network is 22, 23. But as time goes on, the entire pool of compute that is producing the next block in the chain is getting more efficient over time, meaning it's a lower joules per terahash figure and also the pricing system of those computers. What happens to all the old machines? What happens? Well, the value of a computer um, to produce, say, an electrical bill of right now, say, $12,000 of electrical bill to earn you $47,000 of Bitcoin, that's buy low in energy, sell high in Bitcoin. And that is a business that generates a margin of profit. And that profit cycles back into paying that machine. But the overall approach of a large scale industrial miner is to make a profit. Now, if the electrical bill was to treble here up to 90K ish or even 100 plus um, versus the $47,000 worth of Bitcoin, uh, for every $1 of electrical spend, you're earning 50 cents of Bitcoin. So the value of that machine changes. The value of old, less inefficient machines change from producing Bitcoin into producing heat. And the heat is a subsidy because some of that, heat, the heat is produced, energy is neither created nor destroyed. If a, a kilowatt of electricity goes into your computer, a kilowatt of electricity comes out as, as wasted heat. And um, yeah, the value of old, more inefficient, cheaper chips are that they produce heat. And some of that cost is subsidized because even if, even if you can recoup a percentage of that electrical bill in Bitcoin because you are producing some compute power, it gives a value for those old machines. And so that's what we're going to see is um, heating systems. Now, where do you put heating systems? Over half of our uh, global need for energy is to produce heat and that can be in your house that could be part of your boiler system that could be uh, your business of running a, a laundrette you need a big large tank of hot water to, to run those pipes off to the different washing machines when it needs hot water you've got paying customers and it there goes a business idea 
Um, any, any business that needs heat, there is ways of understanding if the economics of the cheaper, less inefficient machines can subsidize some of that energy cost for that demand for heat and economically pay back some of that heat as a subsidy. You're not spending, you know, $100 a month on energy to make more than $100 a month in Bitcoin. Maybe when there's a really heavy bull market, you're going to earn well. But it's about combining that computer in a heating system that is part of a different other revenue stream. And so what this does is you have one energy input, but two energy outputs. If, if a farmer uses some form of heat source to stabilize the temperatures in greenhouses, like right now it's spring. Uh, the fear in spring is that you, 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 so you put the seeds into the soil, they start growing the shoots and then a frost comes, it gets all cold and kills everything off. Would the farmer justify building greenhouses and stabilizing the, the temperatures of those greenhouses with heat? It's too expensive. But maybe there's a path to generate heat from compute from Bitcoin mining. So now he can grow crops to their optimal or even improved yields with warmer temperatures around them. And a secondary digital income stream from Bitcoin mining. Now, what does that do? That allows for the potential of hyper decentralization the expansion of compute power into every home. Add on top some uh, very small chips that store terabytes of data and maybe even a potential, potentially part of a power system. I see a path in which the old, less inefficient chips from Bitcoin mining um, disperse into the world. And if it happens at volume, and we've discussed in other uh, uh, episodes, shall we say, on this channel, that if more compute chases fewer Bitcoin, um, the amount of Bitcoin per kilowatt hour drops. Now, a public miner is a for profit, buy energy low, sell it high as Bitcoin. If the Bitcoin per kilowatt were to collapse because more and more compute is joining that is not mining in an economic sense, remember, buy energy low, sell Bitcoin high. If that profit margin collapses, all of the public scale industrial miners will have to think and re-strategize into exploring other forms of um, combining their business with other services. Yes, demand response of selling and buying power to stabilize the grid, that's one. Heating systems with the computers. But the problem with that is uh, a site producing several megawatts of power, consuming several megawatts of power is producing several megawatts of heat. You don't need that much heat in one particular location. It has to be more decentralized. And so the systematic inevitability of uh, ASIC design, the, the specific computers, is getting smaller. It's going as small as a single chip down to the bit axe mini minor level. But it's also, that's just a single chip. Um, and it's also being, you know, say uh, half a kilowatt to a kilowatt. So an electric heater in your house. Um, even with um, the renewables side of things, the carbon accounting, so producing um, uh, electricity off grid on an old oil well with the gas still leaking out, so they have to burn it. They have to burn it, so capture that energy and, and turn it into electricity and generate carbon credits as well. So there's all these other physical attributes of Bitcoin's network which will generate secondary revenue streams but you can't concentrate, or shall we say centralize, all of those computers in one place because it limits your ability to create heating systems. Um, there's other design ideas I have related to, yes, like oil, uh, like pipelines for oil, that the temperature slows down the, the, the rate of oil transfer. Maybe you could run microchips along the, uh, the oil pipes and, and sustain some warm temperature so allow the, the fluids to flow more, uh, well, flow easier. There's, there's several different things, and especially on the compute side of things, if you've got this path of design where we could potentially see the network hash rate massively increase, not because large industrial scale miners are deploying, but actually um, millions of customers, millions of homes uh, producing, producing their own compute, it causes a level of decentralization in the network that I think just about any Bitcoiner could dream of. Um, and again, they're not producing compute power to generate money, they're producing heat, which is subsidized with the compute power in the process, which just needs a low bandwidth internet connection. 
And so this this path to Bitcoin going to a million is, well, I, I've talked about in other videos that the production floor builds a base of, of price in which um, if the price of Bitcoin goes low, um, natural buyers step in because they can sell power by Bitcoin. And interestingly enough, say at a large scale, maybe we will see people adopting sort of smart meters where the smart meters in homes, um, they're not really smart and they're more just measuring what you use energy, what you use energy for, because every device has a particular energy usage. So as it turns on and off, they sort of know what you're using. You could use Bitcoin mining to blanket mask all of that. You, the computer uses what you're not using. So to the grid, you're using a constant rate of power and now you've got energy privacy. There's an idea. And so all these other different pieces fall into place where I do believe that the hash rate could potentially massively increase um, from just heating systems that have no economic demand to buy power, sell Bitcoin at a higher rate. They're just producing Bitcoin in the process of, an other, of, of another business. So it's almost as if the root system of the Bitcoin network finding its way into different other things. And the analogy I like to use for Bitcoin mining is it's like the mycelium network. And this would make public miners a large mushroom ready to burst and release all of its spores. I think we'll leave it here. I think this gives you a, a, no, a more interesting context that if, well, if a couple million, several million homes were all to deploy a computer, they could double, quadruple the hash rate and demonetize the public miners and force them to release all of their computers and disperse them all around the world as heating systems. Hope this was an interesting video. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.